this is an off grid kitchen built with recycled materials, self harvested oh. lumber, and only a bit of cash. I'm worth it to show you how to build it. Built in our new land in Florida for our mission of reintegrating migratory paths back into the human collective, creating sustainable living through nomadism. We begin this build with acquiring the main materials logs, grate, bricks, roof, beams, and wood boards. At our local lumber mill, we get these undesirable boards for free. The roofing, $50 and great 20 can be found at your local scrapyard. Bricks were repurposed from the repurposed project in Gainesville. The beams were bought near site at Home Depot for $164. And lastly, the logs came from biodynamic badass Jeff Poppins, aka the Barefoot Farmer, author of all these books and grows amazing food on 8 acres of land for tons of families around Nashville and through mutual aid, we were able to harvest these logs. Thanks Jeff. Let's show you how that went. What's going on here? Dragging these trees out of the woods. I've never cut down a tree, never even seen the whole Not procedure. Good. I don't even know what's going on here. So this is a whole learning experience for me too. This knot is uh, not used for hitches. So I make a loop and I pull the rope through that loop. Mm -hmm. And then I go in that in between area, put it oh, around wow. the hitch, pull it tight. And that's not going to come undone, and it's super easy to get undone. That's a trucker's hitch. It's a trucker's hitch. Because literally, it's a it's the hitch. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah! And it's that easy to take off, huh? Next, we loaded the bus with the materials needed for the off-grid kitchen, said goodbye to our friends at the garden and made our merry way to the new land in Florida. Okay, so we started making the kitchen by framing out this square that is 20 feet by 15. So we're measuring four feet in one direction, and then we'll measure three feet in the other direction. And then we'll put this board on this board. We have a five foot distance marked out and we'll put that board in between those two points. And if it matches, if it's five feet in between those two points, then we have a right angle. And we'll do that on each corner until they all match, which when one doesn't match, we have to move it, which messes up the other one. So it can be a little bit of a process. Yeah, this is how we double check our work. If it's a perfect square, it'll be the same distance between this corner and that corner. And this corner and that corner. Which, a perfect square is pretty high standard. Um, within two inches it, of off square is okay. Uh, I like to get it a little better than that, like an inch and a half, but just saying, you don't have to make it perfectly square. See if this is 20 feet still. This is 10 feet. The structure is gonna have a total of eight poles. Three in the back, three in the front, and one on each side. The distance between these poles is 10 feet, and the distance between those poles are um, a little over eight, or a little under eight feet. So each of these posts are gonna be two feet into the ground, so I'm gonna make a mark two feet deep on the post hole digger so that I know when to stop digging. So I've came up against a tree root in the hole that's stopping me from digging the two feet. But I've got a mad axe here and I'm gonna try to dig it out. So we're trying the posts to make them more resistant to rot. Uh, the charcoal is antibacterial. You know, and we want maximum amount of charcoal, not ash. Awesome. I'm just saying that too, just like, wow, yeah. 
Fill it in. We've just got this chainsaw, but it doesn't have any oil and to get some we would have to drive another hour, it's a whole thing. So one really important aspect of building anything is to be able to go with the fucking flow. The plan was Patrick would be doing this with a chainsaw, making it a lot easier, but now we're using a saw. I don't even understand, but what are you doing though? I am uh, making a series of cuts to, to bring, make a flat face. I'm trying to get all these grooves the same angle and the same depth and then I'll chisel out the spaces in between and then make the whole face of this flat. One is for digging in and one is for cutting flat. So if you want to dig in you go this way, if you want to cut flat you go that way. And I want to cut flat. So we went around the garden and we picked out the thickest boards to use for the frame because these are going to be the ones that are load bearing in the front and the back. They're going to be holding up the rafters so it's really important that they're strong because it's the support system for the roof. So here we've squared off the board and also removing the cracked part too in the process of doing that. So now we're gonna put this board up. We're gonna rest it on the bottom ledge of where Patrick cut in so that I know where to cut on this post to make sure that the board's level. We are marking the spot on each of these three posts that the boards can lay flat and level. The German guy at Rainbow. Oh yeah? He taught me this chisel, make little slits and chisel method. Really super handy trick. Wood is like leverage. So if, if I got my hammer here, yeah. It's not oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, yeah, you got it. Boom. Like this and it yes. gives it more leverage. And that's how you remove a nail. And apparently, a top tip for nailing in a nail is to put your nail on an angle, not straight. It's not just apparently, it's apparently true. <laughs> so, it's true, true, apparently. Get way up and yeah, yeah, not yeah. Just there. Yeah, yeah. We start with the short side, hold the board up there and then mark it on the other one level so we know where the chisel on this one. And the reason is if we start it on the higher side, it might overshoot the last one. Oh, yeah, cool, okay. Tree hill. A little bit more. I think, yep. Yeah. Wiggling oh, it. Oh, yeah, wiggling it. Yeah. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's just really cool. We'll be able to look back yeah. years from now. Mm -hmm. Mark all of them up there. Uh -huh. And then we gotta hang all the hangers. Uh -huh. And then boom. Yeah. And that's oh. while well, I was kind of drifting off. Is like I, We should have got some small nice. nails, some 10 pennies, some smaller nails for those hangers. But I don't like screws because screws over time. They move, you know, so like the wind blows and the building shifts. And the wind blows and the building shifts. And nails. Yeah. Nails can bend, but if you bend a screw, it just snaps. Mm -hmm. So we held up one of these new 16-foot rafters that we I bought, know, two by six by 16, showing. up to get the angle between the two sides, and we used that as our marker. Once we got the angle on that one, now we marked all of them. We can cut them all, and they're going to be 16 inches apart. So now I'm going to mark on these boards 16-inch spaces. You went over long and away now, baby.
They're using screws to keep it up together, but then using nails because nails are sturdier and don't get broken when wind or movement happens in the structure. Woo! And now he's cutting off the tops with a chainsaw. Boom! Just like that, baby. So we're putting slat boards perpendicular to the rafters now to create extra support for the roof. About two feet apart across the whole thing to make a good, strong roof in all directions. Here I've got all the roofing, which has little holes in it. So using this sealant, I'm filling in every single hole. the screws on the the ridges mm -hmm. and not in the valleys because water runs down the valleys and runs off the ridges so we put the all the rusted tin on as the roof now we're just screwing it all down with these roofing screws which have this little rubber cap to make sure that no water gets through um, the most importantly we're sealing down all the seams where the tin overlaps and along the edges and then besides that we're just going along those cross beams we put in every single ridge Now he's adding the braces to the structure, adjusting as he goes. I'm gonna actually notch that out a little bit so this sets in there so it gets a good contact. Oh. This is a round edge, so it's kind of hard to get good contact. <laughs> And Bodhi and I are planning out this serving counter. I'm marking it now. And I make sure it's measured perfectly. Look. Works. I'm leveling the ground. And I don't want to dig down because we have limited blocks, so I'm building up. Kind of creating an outline. I'm, I think they call it dry stacking. So I'm not mortaring, I'm just stacking bricks and making it look how I want it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add mortar and make it stove. Need the middle thing. Yeah, it seems pretty solid. Good. Yeah, this board kind of bows a little bit too. Filling up the middle of all these bricks with sand and then we're going to top it off with mortar so that when you scoop out the ash, you're not scooping out the sand too. But right now we're just raising the level of where the fire is going to be built within the stoves. Nice. to see when it turns out an angle and it doesn't fall off. I got this too. Great. <laughs> Two broken pieces of plate. <laughs> we are ready. Yeah, building the trash. <laughs> I 
Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. We're but gonna. Could be good, right? Well, we could throw it. Oh. If the mortar isn't wet enough and there's sand under it, it won't mm. stick. Okay. If it's wet enough, it won't matter. But if it's not wet enough and there's sand under it, it won't stick. Yeah, if it's wet enough, then all the, the chemical binding agents just go down. And... Cool. It looks great. Yep. Just a little bit more. It's like uh, tantalizing noises. Okay, what is it called? ASMR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's people that like make that make a business out of that. I think that should do it. I think. Uh, it's a mortar mix. You know, so it's just Portland and sand, basically. Okay. It's the same as what's between the bricks, though. Yeah. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. If you'd like to be involved in upgrading this kitchen yourself, like adding the rainwater catchment system or even just cooking on it yourself, then join the Florida Working Group on the People's Project website and link up with the tribe. Thanks for watching.